thinking about a kitchen reno? You know what's something really important to remember? Today's design lesson is on kitchen islands. Before you sign your name on those final kitchen drawings and order up your island, I want you to remember one thing. Sarah's got all the answers. That is how you get the kitchen of your dreams. Stay tuned. If you're thinking about a kitchen renovation, I bet you are thinking about whether to install an island or a peninsula. It's a big debate and knowing what the best design is and what the features are is a big source of query when it comes to getting that kitchen design right. So we're going to take a spin through kitchens that I've renovated and designed over the years and take a look at some favorite features. Maybe it will spark a creative idea for you. Are you ready? Let's go. I've got my laptop here. I got slide after slide after slide. Okay, first up, this is the kitchen from Sarah's House Season 4, which was located in a builder box house. And my goal here was to create an awesome kitchen that connected to the dining room and family room and the living room. Really, this kitchen was intended to be the hub of the house. What's special about this island? Well, it was three levels. Sometimes you choose to have a kitchen where your island is all at one level. That's what I have here at Starlight Farm. Sometimes you go for a two level island. And in this case, I just decided to go for broke. I did three different layers. Why? Because I wanted each layer to have a different function. So we've got raised seating on one side. And the wonderful thing about having a raised bar with bar height stools as opposed to counter height stools, bar height stools are 30 inches, whereas counter height stools are 24 inches. The great thing about having bar height is it also acts as a visual break so that if you have an adjacent dining area or family room, it'll help hide that kitchen clutter. So that's why we went with a raised counter here. But then we added a lower side. And the idea with this lower portion was that it could be used for service. It could be used like a buffet. It could be more at table height instead of at kitchen counter height. And so check this out, three layers. Also, this kitchen has two colors. The perimeter is a soft gray and the island is done in a deeper smoky gray. I designed this kitchen 11 years ago. 11 years ago, I still like it. Let's talk about what if you really want an island and you really want seating, but you're not sure how to make that all happen. So one of the things I always recommend when you are embarking on a kitchen renovation is make a list and think about what are the features that are really important to you. This is why I always say designing a kitchen is like a puzzle because you have to figure out how you can fit all the pieces of the puzzle together so that your kitchen hums and works the way you want it to. This is your kitchen, this is your space. I will always encourage you to make sure you design it for you. So I've designed lots of kitchens where the goal is to integrate seating, the goal is to have an island, but maybe the clearances aren't quite enough to necessarily work that way. Generally speaking, for an island, you would put the seating on the longest side. But how many seats do you really need? Would you consider having less seats and putting them on the short side if it meant that you could tick that box and achieve that goal? Check out this kitchen solution. Crisp, sleek, white kitchen, white stools that are white on white, white legs, white vinyl upholstery, and look at the positioning of these stools so that they are not in the way of the busyness of the kitchen. They're sort of put on the external edge of the kitchen, on the outskirts, on the fringe, so that anybody who's sitting here is not getting caught up in the tripping hazard of the hustle and bustle of the action zone. Okay, here's another example, farmhouse kitchen renovation. This one is nearly a decade old and to this day, one of my favorites. And this kitchen was super narrow. So we had to make a lot of cheats to make this kitchen work. How did we do that? Well, we made a narrow island. And generally speaking, I'm gonna say, you don't really want an island less than 36 inches if you wanna put a sink in it as well, because you need enough space to have the depth of the sink and then some counter space behind it. What you'll see here is we combined a dark painted frame with authentic reclaimed barn board. It gives it texture, it gives it fabulous richness and character, and then the rest of 
the kitchen is done in a whitewash, almost like a pickled white finish. This kitchen came from Ikea years ago, and then we customized it. And lots of great hacks here. In order to make this island work, one of the tricks we had to employ was shallower cabinetry all along the pantry wall. So look at this wall with pantries on either side flanking some open counter space and an open shelf in the middle. And it has the further reinforcement of that amazing barn board. So here you can see another example of what it looks like when you've got those stools on the end. This island holds a ton. And I sort of always think of this as being being like the subway car of a kitchen. Lean and mean and designed for business. And I can tell you this kitchen really works because I still visit this kitchen on a regular basis and it is a true entertainer's kitchen. So just because it's narrow doesn't mean it won't work fabulously well. Here's another fun thing to look at. This is an island that also is attached to the structure of the kitchen. And sometimes this happens. The big goal in this kitchen was taking out the wall that divided the dining room from the kitchen. If you are deliberating and you are thinking, I don't know, Sarah, should I remove that wall that separates my kitchen from my dining room? I am gonna say absolutely, completely, and totally, yes, 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 this is always a good idea. It's such a game changer. This house is a small two-story house, and it went from feeling cramped to feeling bright, airy, open, and spacious. And what we did here is you'll see there were some columns that couldn't be removed because they're holding the floor above. So we simply attached the island to these columns. We embraced it. You always need to start out knowing what can't be changed. Know what your structural elements are and then think about how you can work around them. Look at what we did here in order to make sure we maximize the flow from the dining room into the kitchen. See this? On the left hand side we have cabinetry so it has tons of storage to service the dining room. This eliminates the need for a credenza or a sideboard in the dining room and allows the back side of the kitchen island to store everything you need for the dining room. Then I tucked in a couple of stools just to the right of that. Why is this a good idea? Because now you can go in and out from the dining room and not be bumping into somebody at the end of the island. So here's a little consideration. Always think about the flow. Once you think you've got that plan, I suggest you draw on it and think about where are people gonna go? Where am I gonna go with the dishes? How are we getting through this kitchen and around it? And how are we gonna navigate it all the time? This island was a great solution because it was cost effective. We used in-stock cabinetry. Yes, once again, this is IKEA cabinetry that we've jazzed up. So what you'll notice here is look on the back side underneath where those stools are and you'll see we've got tongue and groove or beadboard paneling in here and that just helped give a little bit of character because this house was about 80 years old when we were renovating it so we had crown molding we had nice baseboards and a number of traditional elements that we wanted to maintain in this house so i would say this kitchen has kind of a fresh cottage style also in this kitchen, you'll note the use of architectural salvage corbels. Have you seen my video on corbels? Well, if not, you're gonna to wanna to check that out for lots of ideas of how to integrate corbels in innovative ways into your decor. Moving along. We've gone from fresh country and now we are diving into sleek modern and well, this is our kitchen in the city. And I love this kitchen because for years we were trapped with an existing layout and it was so hard to change. But again, in that big spectrum of making the big decision when we renovated our house, we took out the wall between the kitchen and the dining room. And that was the ultimate game changer. And you know whose idea the placement of this island was? Whose? Yours. It was? Yes. I don't remember that. You don't remember that? No. So, okay, remind me of that. Okay. I, that completely took me by surprise. We live in a house that has some funny angles. And you know me, I am not an angle fan. Our kitchen has an angled wall, which always made it super challenging to figure out a layout. It was literally not wide enough to have an island of any size. So for years we lived with a peninsula and then we decided to take down the wall between the kitchen and the dining room and my husband, the Minister of Exteriors, had a great idea. He said let's relocate 
the closet that's in the way into the front hall. Let's move the powder room into where the closet was and presto, we'll have a lot more space. This is our kitchen workhorse in the city. And there's a lot of things I love about this island. You've heard me talk about a three level island. Well, here's a two level island. And this was designed with a really important consideration in mind. For years, our dining room was beside the kitchen. I've since done some redecorating during the pandemic and it's now a lounge and I've relocated the dining room, but we're not talking about that today. Let's just talk about this island. It has a raised storage area at one end. It has high gloss cabinets and these are designed to service the dining room. It is wrapped in the most gorgeous Calicutta marble. This was a splurge. And if you are renovating, you have to know what to splurge on and what to save on. This was the big splurge in the kitchen. We used a piece of Calicutta marble that wraps around this storage unit and also in behind the range. And was it worth it? I will say absolutely yes, because it is like artwork. Look at the veining on it. It is so beautiful. The great thing about having the raised piece at the end is that it creates a visual barrier into the kitchen. So when you're sitting at the dining room table, you are not looking at whatever mess the cook left. What? Leave a mess on the counter? No, I would never. Our kitchen is white, 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 and more white. Well, actually the island is the lightest, palest shade of gray. It is so pale, it might as well have been white. So if you're thinking about doing a two color option for your kitchen, always think about how to make the most of it. Make sure that you choose two colors you love that you will never get tired of and that will stand the test of time. Do you remember when our kitchen used to have color in it? Yeah, I remember when our kitchen had color. We're gonna make another video about kitchens with color, but I don't miss the color in that kitchen because I like how light and bright it is always. I find it inspiring all day, all night, and it is timeless and I'm never getting tired of it. So if you're thinking about it and you're wondering what color should my kitchen be, it can be any color you choose, whether it's colorful, or white or a wood tone. The key is to make sure it's what you feel you will love for the long haul, because let's be honest, everybody, kitchens are expensive to renovate and you don't want to get it wrong. Here's another example of a two level island. This is an open concept space. This kitchen is in a converted church. So the key here was that because it's a big open space, it really lives like a loft. You wanna make sure that the kitchen isn't the main focus. So look at this long raised wall. The design of this island was loosely based on the design of the island I did for Sarah's house season three, which was our farmhouse at Paisley Acres. What really appeals to me about these high cabinets that run almost the entire length of the island is this is awesome storage. And I really feel like these days storage is something we just can't get enough of. Whether you are using this to store candles, placemats, table linens, vases, all that kind of serving stuff, or in our kitchen at our old farm, it was our pantry cupboard. And it was so great because when you look at tall lower cabinets, like the way I've installed these, think about how easy it is for everyone to access, how easy it is for the kids to find the cereal, the crackers, the snacks, you name it. Keeping everything at sort of chest level and below makes it easy to load and unload and self-serve. So think about that as an idea. Okay. What if you're in a temporary space? What if you really want an island? This actually is a loft, and this is something that we made using a rolling cart that came from a restaurant supply store. So we married a rolling cart of stainless steel with lockable casters with an in-stock big butcher block counter. And what it created was lots of prep area, huge counter space. No, it doesn't have the sink in it, but you know what? If you're on a budget, that's okay. You don't necessarily need to have services in the island. This works because it's a great gathering spot. It's a place to hang out, use it like a bar, use it for entertaining, and those lockable wheels, that means it can be easily moved wherever it needs to go. Ooh, let's talk about dark and moody. Yes, I love a white kitchen, but I had a client once upon a time who was 
fearless. Before black kitchens were a really big trend, this lady was so happy to go for a kitchen that was black and white and yummy gold. This was located in a historic Victorian home, so we really wanted to infuse this kitchen with character, and character we added. This is another example of an Ikea kitchen. And what you'll see here is that we've added corbels to the underside of the countertop. So the countertop has an overhang, and you may be looking at this and thinking, now why would you do this, Sarah? Because one of the things I don't love is when you just have that countertop kind of hanging off into space. I think it looks so elegant Elegant if you add that corbel to the side, which allows the edge of the countertop to cascade down and meet the edge of the recessed cabinetry behind it. So does that make sense? I think it makes sense. In this black and white and gold kitchen, our goal was to try and inject some bistro styling. So you'll notice we have bent wood stools, and that's kind of a reference to what you would often find in a classic bistro. We have Carrera marble countertops. Actually, this is quartz that mimics Carrera marble countertops. And then on the backsplash, a combination of tile that injects the white, the gray, and that accent of black because you know me, I always wanna see everything all tied up together. And speaking of gold or Dijon yellow, one of my favorite islands because it had so many happy memories was the island in our farmhouse for Sarah's house season three. And this was all painted in a shade of Dijon yellow. And I think you should not be afraid to have fun with color in a kitchen. You might say, but will I regret it? I don't know, I don't think you will. I designed this kitchen in 2009, that's 12 years ago, and I think this kitchen is still withstanding the test of time. I still think it looks great. And if you paint part of your kitchen, you can always repaint it if you really want to do something different. What you'll see here is we had wraparound seating. So here's something to think about. You don't necessarily have to put all your seating on one side. You don't have to choose the long side or the short side. In fact, you can banana that seating around. You can do wraparound seating, which is one of my favorite tricks. You know why? Because it creates more conversation conversational groupings. And you might be prepping, you might have people hanging out, always in my kitchen. I am here at Mission Control and there are people sitting, whether they're sitting in the chairs by the fire, whether they're sitting at the table, whether they're sitting at the bar, there are always people mingling and hanging out and that's what I love. So I want you to think about how you can best harness the space in your kitchen and the design of your island to get all of those best features in. So far, I've shown you lots of islands that are big, lots of islands that are long, but sometimes you have a more compact proportion to work with. So this island in this kitchen is actually four and a half feet wide by five and a half feet long. And you know what that does? It created lots of opportunity for storage on all sides. It also created an opportunity to have three stools. What you'll see is two stools here in the photo, but you can actually actually add another person around the corner because of the way this island is designed. When you're thinking about your island, don't necessarily just plan to have storage along the front side and the back side. If space permits, you can wrap it around all four sides and this allows you to tailor what you're storing, where it's most efficient and where it's most effective. Also, something that you will notice in lots of the kitchens I design is that I try and get extra storage storage underneath the overhang where the stools are. And you might think, Sarah, isn't that super inconvenient? This is not where you're putting your everyday coffee mug. This is where you're putting the stuff that you don't need all the time. This is where I store vases, I store extra candles, I store big serving platters that I only pull out when I'm entertaining a really big crowd. I might also store things that are seasonal, like storing the melamine dishes and the outdoor glassware in the winter when I don't need it because it's not summer. Kitchens that make me happy, kitchens that make me smile, kitchens that I really like the way they turned out. The kitchen in Sarah Off The Grid season two, this one was a winner for me. Here's another example of that two level island. This one was really designed with function and sight lines in mind. So 
Once again, it opens onto the dining room. Once again, we don't want to see the mess. Once again, we have great storage on the backside. And look here, we have the wraparound seating option. I have a few favorite elements about this island that I want to call your attention to. First one I have to talk about is not the island design itself, but the counter design because I took fresh concrete by Caesar Stone and then I mitered on an edge, a nice thick edge from a leftover piece from what was on the backsplash. And it's kind of a subtle detail, but I think a really fabulous detail because when you mix materials, great things happen. I also took that same material and I wrapped it around that raised kitchen storage area. You'll recognize this, I already told you about this, how I did it in our kitchen at home. You see, I find an idea and then I reuse and repurpose and change up my favorite ideas. Below the counter here, we didn't have enough room for storage, so instead I did a slatted treatment. This was super easy. We got pieces of poplar, thin strips of poplar. Poplar is good because poplar is a very hard material, and they were about a quarter of an inch thick and about two and three quarters tall. And we just used them as this horizontal banding, then we reinforced that design detail and we also put it on the vent hood. Okay, more on that later because I'm going to be talking about blue kitchens in another episode. Okay, now here we are. This is our kitchen here at Starlight Farm. And you'll say, do you like this kitchen, Sarah? Yes, I love this kitchen. I love this island. The design of this island and the way I wanted this kitchen to be designed actually informed the overall design of the entire house. Super important to me, I wanted a built-in banquette with fabulous table that looked out to our view. That was really important. I knew I wanted a giant island that could take at least five stools. And I knew that when I was standing, working here at the kitchen counter, I wanted to see all the way through to the living room and the fireplace because I wanted to make sure that even if I was working here in the kitchen, I could feel connected to everybody else. Now that isn't necessarily the way everybody wants to design, but the number one most important starting point in the design of your kitchen renovation or in the build of your home is knowing how you want to use your kitchen, how you want it to function, and what you're looking to achieve as an end result. What we did for the island was we took inspiration from a piece of architectural salvage that became the powder room vanity. Huh? What does a powder room vanity have to do with a kitchen island? Well, it had this really nice projection. So we copied that same projection and used it for the kitchen island. And what it does is when you've got something that is absolutely massive, it helps just create a little bit more interest and it kind of softens the edges. When we're talking about massive islands, you know what's something really important to remember? <laughs> Really, 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 before you sign off, before you sign your name on those final kitchen drawings and order up your island, I want you to remember one thing. I want you to hear me say this. Make sure you know what your countertop surface is going to be and make sure it is big enough because this is a quartz counter. This is organic white by Caesar Stone and it comes in a jumbo slab. But I designed this island to be so jumbo that we almost didn't have enough material to create the kitchen counter. My fabricator, Tony, called me and he said, uh, Sarah, did you want your kitchen counter to have a buildup? Slabs usually come, most slabs are three quarters of an inch thick. I wanted to have a one and a half inch thick nosing around the edge. And he said, and what did you think I was gonna make that build up out of? Because you have created an island that is basically the size of the entire slab. Anyway, he managed to make it work. But if this island had been an inch bigger, it wouldn't have worked. So just make sure that you triple check the measurements. Make sure that you've chosen your countertop material and make sure it's big enough to suit the size of your cabinetry before you sign off. I know, you might think, Sarah, that's so basic, but sometimes you get carried away and you add more functions. Oh, I want the garbage pullet, I want the microwave, I want the dishwasher, I want a really big sink, I want some more storage drawers. Next thing you know, you've got this really big island. You may have also noticed, you see that glint of gold and are you wondering what that is? Those are actually solid brass panels. And why are they there? Just for fun. 
I decided to choose these amazing hammered brass pendants and then I wanted to reinforce that feeling. In the same way that in one of the other kitchens I talked about having a bistro feeling, I wanted this kitchen to have the warmth. I wanted it to have a little bit of the glint of metal that we were bringing in in the light fixtures and in the hardware and so I got pieces of raw brass that have patinated over time and that is part of what I love. I like the fact that my kitchen will tell the story of how it gets used. Here's a fresh new kitchen that you haven't seen yet. This kitchen is from our Alpine Farmhouse project and I still have to take you on a full tour of the Alpine Farmhouse, but here's the kitchen. So this is the original kitchen. It's gonna have fabulous windows. This is a nice new direction and what you've probably seen lately is lots of white oak detailing in kitchens. For so many years people shied away from using wood in the kitchen and it was all painted, so much painted. And one of the most amazing things you can do is when you think about that two color combination, think about it being a two material combination. So we have white, nice satin matte white for the whole perimeter of this kitchen with white countertops. It just sort of disappears. And then the island. The island is the glamour. The island is the elegance. And this is all done in white oak. And look at how these stools almost camouflage. It's almost like you can't even see them. They have buttery leather tops that are the exact same color as the white oak. So this is clean, streamlined. This is Scandi modern and this is a really great kitchen. Okay, another design detail to look at here on this island is, look at the thickness of the countertop. We decided that instead of an inch and a half buildup on the kitchen counter, we would go two and a quarter inches. And it just gives it a little bit more substance. And then we match that as the same thickness of the gables that come down that vertical that sort of frames in where all the stools are. And what I want you to think about here is how you create those rhythms, those proportions that are the same. So when you repeat proportions, it creates a really graceful end result that is pleasing to your eye. You don't even necessarily know why it's good, but just trust me when I say that if you repeat the thickness of your counter to the thickness of the gable, it'll always look great. Ooh, here's a little idea. Have you heard about this year's Pantone colors? I can't remember exactly what they're called, but it's yellow and gray. And years ago, I did a kitchen renovation for someone. Her favorite color is yellow. And she said, I just love yellow. Yellow makes me happy. So I want a kitchen that has some bold yellow accents. So we installed marigold yellow chairs. We had fabulous funky fabric on the window coverings because this kitchen, instead of a kitchen with an eat-in area, this kitchen has a lounge area because this is how people want to gather in their kitchens. They want to have the prep, they want to have the casual dining, and then they want to have the living area attached right to the kitchen. I call this the living kitchen. This is where this family spends most of their time and it totally hums. One of the things to think about is if you have a long island, how much seating space do you actually need? Do you need the entire length of the island or can you sneak in some clever storage just underneath that counter? Here what you'll see is we had narrow cabinets. I think they were, I'm gonna look at this picture, how wide is that? That's a 15 inch wide cabinet. So you could make it 12 inches wide or 15 inches wide, but we were able to sneak in some clever wine storage right underneath the countertop here. And it really makes a difference if you think about how you can sneak in extra storage wherever possible. Got a busy household, want a durable surface, trying to think about how best to create that streamlined, minimal, modern styling. Well, this is where the waterfall countertop comes in. And a waterfall countertop means that you take your countertop material and it goes across the top and seamlessly waterfalls down and goes from a horizontal to a vertical. It has a crisp mitered edge. This requires a great fabricator and installer to make sure that it is laser precision, gorgeous and beautiful. But look how lovely and elegant this chunky thick waterfall edge looks, especially when we have the accent of natural wood recessed underneath it. 
When you're designing your island and you're thinking about all the materials, you have to think about how it's going to be seen and where it's going to be seen. It's not necessarily just from a standing perspective. What if you have adjacent seating? That way, when you're sitting down low, you're going to be looking right at that underside. So the underside, the backside of the island, underneath the counter, it matters. You have to make sure that you get all those material choices right and make sure it looks interesting. Here's another fun one from my team at Sarah Richardson Design. Believe it or not, this is a condo kitchen. And remember how I was saying that not all islands are long and narrow? Well, this was a combination of an almost square prep surface for the island, and then attached directly to it was a sunken table. So a built-in table for four, also almost exactly square. So this is dining and prep all combined together, but not everybody wants to sit at a counter stool. And if you want to sit comfortably in a dining chair that's almost more like a lounge chair, this is a great way to do it. One last feature to think about is, we've talked a lot about an island being a different color from the main cabinetry, but what about if you choose to have all the cabinetry the same color and instead change up the countertops? Changing up the countertops is something that I do very frequently. I don't necessarily need the perimeter counters and the island counters to match. I think more is more. And in this case, we took all white cabinetry and then we had white counters on the perimeter and black counters on the island. And this really stands out. It creates a crisp monolith in the middle of the kitchen. The black counter reinforces the dark floors. It reinforces the dark grout on the backsplash. And this is a solution that really works. So I always think if you're torn and you can't decide between two colors for your millwork, use both. If you can't decide between two countertop surfaces, use both. That is how you get the kitchen of your dreams. And hopefully you've got some ideas of features, little tricks, things you can do to make sure that if you're designing an island, it will be the island of your dreams. Make sure you subscribe to follow along and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. You'll know as soon as we release the next one.